Before we go and develop some Rails code, we need to look at the procedure that we're going to follow in order to develop good Rails code. And we're going to use something called TDD or Test Driven Development. The idea is that we're going to live by this name and be test driven. In other words, we're going to write tests and those tests are going to tell us what code we should write. Uh, usually we'll write those tests in cooperation with our client or our customer and they're going to say, I need this to happen. I need this bug to be fixed. I need this new feature to be developed. And so you say, you write a code and say, if this code runs correctly, does that describe what you want? Yes, no, and you make sure that it happens. And once you've got those tests, then you can enter into an iterative type of development that uh, some people like to call this red-green refactor. And the way it works is we start in this red state. And what we do is we write our, our test, and before we do anything else, we run our test. And if our test is run, written properly, it should fail. If it doesn't fail, that means we've already supposedly delivered this bug fix or this new feature. We know that's not true, otherwise we wouldn't have started in the first place. So our test must be broken. We, we want our test to only pass when we do deliver that bug fix or, or new feature. We don't want it to pass when we accidentally write some random code and, and it works. And so this is a first level kind of a test of the test that we've written to make sure it uh, only works when it should. So once we've written that test and it properly fails, then we can go about writing our code to try to pass that test. And what we do then is is write whatever code we want and try to run our tests. And maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but we do and eventually we write the test of the code so that the test works. And we should be writing this in uh, minimal way so that we just get the test to pass. We don't write anything extra. We don't write it necessarily nicely. We write it so that we deliver what the client wants. And that is going to be the most efficient uh, way to get what we want. But oftentimes when we do it, our code can turn really nasty really quick. And so frequently we move uh, from that green stage to the refactor stage where we're not trying to add new functionality, we're not trying to fix a bug, but we're trying to make sure our code looks good and that it is usable, it's modular, it's readable, and it's revisitable in, later on. And the great thing is we already know we have working code. It does what we want it to do. And what we're just trying to do here is make the code usable for, for us. So while the tests pass before, they should always continue to pass. So we always know that if we tried to fix some code up and it didn't work, we've got a working piece of code that we can d depend upon. And we can mess around. We can say, what would happen if we made this massive change to the code? It would be so much nicer. It would look great. It would be modular. We try it and we can't get the test to pass. Oh, no big deal. We, we use our version control system. We revert back to what it was and we still have working code. Or we, or we say, oh, we forgot that, we make that little fix, and it works. And we nonetheless always end in an all-test passing situation. So we're, we're very comfortable with messing around with our code because we, we know that we've got good or bad code, at least. Code that works is, is the key. And so we don't have to worry about what happens if we totally mess things up. Well, you don't have to worry about it. It's working. And we have tests to help demonstrate that it's working for us. And because this is an iterative process, we can include our, our client as part of the process. We, we always go from red to green, and depending upon the nature of our code, we're either going to go from green back to red and, and start a new feature or bug fix, or we're going to go from green to refactor to, to make our code look good. But uh, as part of that iterative process where we're cycling and cycling between these, um, we should, in a periodic basis, be including the client and saying, what do you think? Because the client could say, yeah, that's great. That's exactly what I asked for. But the client could also say, oh, you know, that is exactly what I asked for. But now that I see it, that is not at all what I want. What I really want is this over here. And so rather than keeping on developing in this vein that you, your client asked for and you thought that they asked for, you can 
shift gears and recalibrate with the client and say, okay, well, what do you really want then? Write some new tests that reflect their, their new thinking in the process and make sure that you end up delivering what they really want that's really going to help them rather than developing something that might or, or might not help them. Or your client could say, yeah, that's what I wanted, but now that I see that, can you do this additional thing or this new thing or can you organize it in this way? By I incorporating them in that way, you, you get them excited and understanding and be able to direct the process so that in the end, you're giving them what they want and will most benefit from. And so this testing framework it can be a really helpful way of including the client in the process and making sure that you're constantly delivering something that is good. So we're going to use this test-driven development in our Rails application development. Um, and so we're going to look at some tools we use to deliver this test-driven development framework.